Okay, so hey guys, it's Quinston, and today we're going to look at the end queen problem. Now, what is the end queen problem? It is a problem in which we have to place n queens. That is, n can be a number from you know one to infinity or whatever on a n by n board. Now, an n by n board is basically the same number of queens. The the length, the number of cells in the horizontal position are equal to the number of queens in the entire board, so n by n, in such a way that they don't interfere with each other. Interfere as in they interfere in the path. So basically queens can go diagonally and horizontally and vertically in on, on the chess board, right? So the queens have uh, unusual powers in the chess world. So we have to place them on the board in such a way that they do not cut each other or they do not kill each other. Yeah, simple, get the feeling, right? Okay, so what the way we do this is basically um i have a slideshow for this so let's go on to the slideshow so this is the four by four matrix now there are two methods in which we can you know do this basically the first method is we generate all the combinations we can put you know queens on the chessboard four queens on the chessboard and then we check each of them if they satisfy certain conditions like you know the diagonally uh, moving queens and stuff like that if they satisfy th that those you know conditions we will put them in the results but the problem with this is that uh, there's actually a big problem because that will be very tedious suppose you have a 10 by 10 matrix and you have to generate that many uh, combinations it is gonna be hard like really hard to generate those you know combinations instead what we do here is we use backtracking now backtracking means uh, the the program will intuitively know if you have to put the queen in that position or not we're gonna put the queens in form of columns so we're gonna move from the first column to the last column uh, and if in a position the queen does not fit or it is not possible to fit the queen there then we backtrack and move to the next row yeah if it doesn't fit there we move to the next row but if it does we move to the next column keep that in mind while we're doing this so let's start this algorithm in the first cell here I'm gonna place a queen and now I said that we can place a queen because there, there are no other queens so we don't need to check if that's true or not so uh, intuitively we'll next move to the next column so in the next column I place a queen so you might think oh we cannot do that of course we cannot do that because the queens will interfere with each other let's try this oh still no but that's not possible now what we did here is we backtracked we made this cell zero and we made this cell one that's backtracking backtrack again because that is not possible but now it is possible the queens do not interfere with each other the only way they can is by using one or uh, two or more moves and that is not allowed anyway so yeah let's move to the next column here no backtrack next column here uh, y no obviously because then this will interfere with each other these and then here possibly not here no so the entire column doesn't support it so what does it do it backtracks to the previous column and we know by experience that this is not possible so we backtrack to the previous column and now because we are backtracking we need to change rows similarly to what we did further so if you get the gist of it this is going to be a recursive algorithm yeah you heard it first guys this is going to be a recursive algorithm and now here Q yes uh, no you can't put it over there here no you can't put it over there either here no here yes you can put it over here because they don't interfere with each other and here oh yeah you can put it over there too magic or I say myself here uh, no here no they're diagonally this one can attack over here and these two can attack each other so not possible but here hmm yes so this is the answer four queens in a four by four matrix and that is how simple it is it is not very hard instead of generating all the combinations and checking them individually isn't this so much easier but there is a catch the program is a bit tedious to understand but don't worry it will be a fun ride to go through so yeah let's get to the program uh, it's written in java for a change i thought python was a little too much so i put it in java so yeah let's get to that okay so let's start with the code for this tutorial so the first thing the first line basically is going to be the import statement we're going to import a scanner a scanner is basically going to use uh, be used to take input from the user we're going to take input from the user for the value of n yes that is how awesome this is 
Uh, so the scan will be a new scanner object um, system out of println print on the screen state the value of n in this program n is equal to scan dot next int next int is basically used to take an input from the user which is in the int uh, format so yeah n will be that value n is over here if you were wondering static int n static because well all the functions are static and you need to be you know static to be uh, usable in those functions uh, int n and 4 so n is 4 initially uh, the default value is 4 but then we can change the value by taking it from the user so uh, int a uh, board n by n so this is going to be the you know the, the part where we make the board uh, initially so n by n is going to be the board if we entered 5 will be a 5 by 5 board uh, it's an array a, a, a bi-dimensional array obviously um, and uh, in Java it is like whenever you declare a bi-dimensional array or any array it is automatically initialized to uh, zero. So then we have this function call right here. Now this function call is very important as it is the call which, uh, which is supposed to be made initially to start off the program, the engine, start the engine basically. So it's called the board solver and in that we pass in the board and the column number, the num number which we want to you know start from, the column number. So um, Let's start the board solver. Where is that program? Oh, sorry, the function. It's over here. It's not that big, is it? Um, and now, column. This is the column, right? We passed in zero, so we start from the zeroth column. So if column is greater than or equal to n, n is right now. Uh, let's take it as four. Okay, let's take it as four. So zero is greater than four. Uh, not really. So this will not be true. Um, mind you, if it returns true, it will print the board automatically because this will be true right and not equal to matlab means it will be like the opposite of true so this will not run anyway and this will be run print board print board is basically utility used to print the board pretty obvious isn't it um okay let's get back to where we were so zero is not greater than um four so this will not return true so go to the next line for int i is equal to zero i is less than n i plus plus n is four so i will go from let's see 0, 1, 2, and 3. So these are basically rows. So this traverses the rows. Okay. So if to place or not to place board i column. So i is basically the row and this is the column. So we're checking if we want to place it in the first one of the rows in the first column. So we start from 0, 0. Okay. As we saw in the slideshow, 0, 0. Let's check. To place or not to place is a utility to check if there are any attacking queens in that position and 0 comma 0 you wouldn't expect to find any right so let's check that out so to place or not to place that is a function pretty Shakespeare-ish int i and j um, basically they, those are loops uh, variables used to control the loops and here we check the first um, i equal to 0 i less than column i plus plus this is basically used to check uh, in the row uh, diagonally top or uh, left and diagonally bottom left bottom left top left and to the left so basically whenever you put some a queen in there it's got obviously going to be on the left hand side it's never going to be on the right because you know it's going to be on the right or not okay because you're putting it there check the slide you'll realize it so uh, we're checking the board on the left hand side we're checking the board on the top left and we're checking the board oh sorry bottom left diagonally so if any of these return false, oh uh, sorry, not false, false, sorry, if any of these return false, what will happen is uh, this whole thing to place or not to place will return, will be false. And if this is false, this whole thing will not execute. Okay, then we'll go to the next row because i is zero, then one, then two and three. You remember what I said, right? We change rows when there is nothing to do or we don't want to place anything. So, but if, but if, but if this is true, we'll go inside the loop and we'll put that as one, matlab, meaning we'll put that cell, we'll make that cell as one and it'll be the queen's home, the cell home, Ugh, put it in jail. If the board solver, again, we call it recursively and now we're going to the next column. Listen to what I said. When we put something, put the queen in a cell, we move to the next column and that's exactly what we're doing here. But as this function is recursive, See, the board solver, board column plus one, so obvious. And then this value, uh, whatever it will return, if it's true, if it returns true, 
then you know where to go. Um, this will be this will not be executed, and then it would directly go to over here. And this is false. You pin the board, and that's the answer. Uh, when we call this, it will go in here again, right? This will be so. Everything is being repeated over and over again, over and over again. You see, the column changes, the row changes, and that's how you put it in. And that is basically it. If you know this much, whatever I just said, this, it checks for the, the, the row, left of the row. This checks for the top left. This checks for the bottom left. If there are any queens present. If there are, which means this, ij is equal to equal to 1, there are queens present. And then it returns false. So, and this is just a print board utility. If uh, int i for i is equal to 0, i less than and i plus plus, uh, basically the two for loops which you use to you know, traverse the entire uh, bi-dimensional array if board ij is equal to equal to one you print out q because i wanted to be fancy uh, and not very subtle so yeah let's see uh let's run this program and see what happens right again and let's put four in there and yeah it works for uh, the same one which we did in the slideshow it's the same right again 10 and it works for the 10 too and if it put five in there, it works for five too. So that's the program. It's not pretty. It, it's actually pretty easy to understand, even though you, you know, most people think this is a very hard problem. It's not. It's pretty simple. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Uh, if you like this video, subscribe, like, and share. And uh, yeah, keep it peaceful.